Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <coughs> يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال سبحانه وتعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا اصبروا وصابروا ورابطوا واتقوا الله لعلكم تفلحون وقال سبحانه وتعالى ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد صلاه تعرفنا بها اياه وعلى اله والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات حق قدرك ومقدارك العظيم امين اما بعد we begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we begin by praising him by glorifying him and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send peace and blessings upon our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower this gathering with his mercy and make it a source of blessings for us in dunya and akhirah say amin Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا أَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ That they are not commanded except to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to devote themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity, with all the religion and all their devotion being for Him alone. And this is one of the, one of the foundational aspects of our deen, is that this deen requires from you to be sincere. This deen... It requires you to be sincere. And without that, everything else is worthless. As the Prophet ﷺ, he was making hijrah from Mecca to Medina. And many of the Sahaba were making hijrah before Rasulullah ﷺ. There was a man, he's in love with a woman called Umm Qais. And he proposed to her and he went after her and he pursued her. And you can imagine when somebody's in love, you know, he's doing everything he can. And she said, between me and you is Islam. So you have to become Muslim. And you have to make hijrah. Go from Mecca and come to Medina. And so he joined the Muhajirun and he made hijrah. And on the surface you can see all the hardships that the Muhajirun are going through, he's going through. Going through the desert in the heat with hunger and thirst. With the fear and the danger following him. Finally he arrives to Medina and he proposed to Qais and he gets married. MashaAllah. Mission accomplished. But all through a while, they're making hijrah. The only thing he was talking about is this beautiful girl that he's going to marry. Everyone else is thinking about Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And, and this man is talking about this woman that he's in love with, that he's infatuated with. And so when they arrive to Medina and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam arrives, they come to him. They say, Ya Rasulullah, there's this man, he made hijrah with us. And all the while he was talking about this. Is his hijrah the same as ours? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ That indeed your actions will be based on your intentions. And whoever made hijrah for Allah and His Messenger, then their hijrah was for Allah and His Messenger. And whoever made hijrah to marry some woman or to attain some worldly benefit, then their hijrah was for that. And so this foundational 
teaching in our deen, many books of hadith, this is the first hadith you find in there. Is that hadith teaching you about the sincerity and the intention with which you're supposed to come before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the glorified, the most wise, the most high. There is nothing that He is in need of us for. All of creation is in need of Him. And so our ulama, they said, when you, are, when you come before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have mixed intentions, and your intentions are, 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 are made dirty with, with some worldly aspirations and other things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no requirement, no need for that kind of worship. When you purify your intentions and you come before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity, that is for Allah alone. And what happens is as you're, as you're struggling to attain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as you're trying to strive to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you. Because he says in the Quran, Afahasibtum, did you really think that you, you're going to say La ilaha illallah? That you're going to say, I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to test you? Right? Those who came before you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we tested them and we shook the earth beneath them, and we caused them to go through all kinds of trials and tribulations and temptations until we were we clarified and separated between those who were truthful and those who were lying. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he mentioned the story of a man called Juraj. He used to live during Bani Israel. And this man, he noticed and he realized the value of dunya was nothing. And so he decided he's going to leave his home. He's going to leave his family. He's going to leave everything. And he's going to go up to the mountains and he's going to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a state of a monasticism. Tark dunya as they say. Leave all, everything of the dunya and just go worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran that the, pe the people before us, they invented this idea of leaving everything for the sake of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not ask them to do this. But they did it out of their love for Allah and they did it out of the realization of the value of dunya. So this man Juraj, he leaves everything, he goes into the mountain. And he builds himself a small place to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He locks the door and he, every day and every night he's there worshiping Allah. Praying, worshiping, praying, worshiping. Every single day this is his life. And at some point his mother has some need of him. So she climbs the mountain and she comes and she knocks on the door. She says, Juraj, I need you for something. And he's in salah. And he has a, a calculation in his mind. He thinks to himself, do I continue my salah or do I respond to my mother? And then he thinks, you know, Allah is greater than my mother. So he continues with his worship. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said, In kana faqi, If he was somebody who understood the meaning of this deen, he would have responded to his mother. But he didn't. He continued his prayer. And she comes the next day and she stands by his door, calling him to come out, calling him because she needs him. And this goes on for hours and hours. Juraj doesn't respond. Third day, same thing happens until she gets fed up with him and she says, Juraj, may you see the face of an evil woman. May you see the face of a wicked woman. She curses him and she leaves. And the Prophet is telling us the dua of the father, the dua of the mother to her child, to their child, is accepted dua. Right? Other accepted du'as. The du'a of the oppressed against the oppressor is an accepted du'a. And so here she's making du'a against her son. May you see the face of an evil, wicked woman. And you know, he's a, he's a man secluded in worship. Where is he going to find an evil, wicked woman to see her face? So this, is, this is something unimaginable. Two worlds separate, separated by East and West. But her du'a is accepted. And there's a disease in the hearts of the people. Whenever they see somebody excelling, whenever they see somebody living a righteous life, and shaitan comes to them and says, look at this man, he's trying to be an example, let's bring him down. And so there's a town nearby, and there's a rumors going around, have you heard about this great saint in the mountains named Juraj? Man, I heard you know, like the, the, the trees are greener there, the grass is growing better in that area because of the blessings of this person. And then somebody else who has evil in his heart, he said, they're all fake. All these righteous people, they're all fake. They're all the same. La ilaha illallah. Have you heard this kind of talk before? All these mullahs and all these people and these awliya Allah. And these, they're all fake people. They're just pretending. Right? So the one who says things like this, there's a disease in his own heart. Because you only see what's in yourself. The world is a mirror to you. 
So what you see in others is a reflection of what's going on inside your own heart. And so some people with diseases in their hearts, they say, this guy is fake and this, this, this. And then they say, we can prove it to you. We can prove it to you. What do we do? Let's hire some woman to go and seduce him. And they go and they hire this woman. And they give her half the money up front. They say, we want you to go to the mountain, find this man named Juraj, and we want you to seduce him. And so we can know, he expose his reality as to what he is really. And so they send this, this, uh, this woman to go after him. She comes into the mountain. She knocks on his door. Juraj, you know, I'm traveling through this area. I heard you're a righteous man. Will you let me be here for one day? This, this, this. Juraj is in salah. He didn't open the door for his mother. He doesn't open the door for her. She attempts three days, four days, five days, a week goes by, and this man is unresponsive. So finally she gets, you know, this idea that if I don't go back successful, I'm going to lose all that other money they promised me. So she says, I have an idea. She goes to the next village over. She seduces some poor farmer. And then she comes back pregnant. And then after a while she gives birth. She says, this is Jorej's baby. Now let me collect the money. She collects her money. And the people are up in arms about it. We knew it. We knew it. This guy is fake. This guy with all his pretentious iman and all these things and righteous worship and all these things. We, he's a fake. Let's go, let's go teach him a lesson. They come out with their pitchforks and everything. And they come and they destroy his monastery. And they pull him out. And they're beating him. And they're kicking him. And she's there with, with the baby. And he's like, what's going on? Why are you guys beating on me? And, and they say, you're, you're this person, you're vile, you're wicked, you're a womanizer. We know you're, you're, you're a father of this child and all these things. Take a look. And he looks up and he sees the face of this evil, wicked woman. Just like the mother had said, may you see the face of an evil, wicked woman. And as soon as he sees this, he realizes, okay, this is what's happening. He says, let me do turakas. And then you can do with me whatever you want. They say, okay, no problem. And he says, Allahu Akbar. And he starts his two rakas. MashaAllah, they're just waiting. When is this guy going to finish? And then he's done. He picks up a, a stick. He pokes the baby. He says, tell me, baby, who's your, who's your father? And the Prophet wasallam said, this was one of the moments in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed a newborn baby to speak. Isa alayhi salam, another one who spoke. The woman in the story of Ashab al-Ukhdud, when they were genociding these believers and throwing them into the fire, and she was holding her baby, and, the, and she hesitated for a moment. And the baby said, just walk into the fire, O mother, and Allah will give you Jannah on the other side. Second baby. Third one, this baby. Said, my father is this farmer, this is his address, this is his social security number. Spill the whole beans, everything, his PII's, everything. And the people realize this is a mu'jiza, this is a karama, this is a, a huge sign for the, you know, for the righteousness of this man. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed this miracle to take place. So they realize this man is no fake, he is sincere. His iman was sincere. And so they say, let us build this monastery with golden bricks for you and silver bricks. He said, no, just build it back the way it was and leave me alone to worship Allah. Leave me alone to worship Allah. And this is the reality, whenever you are sincere, or you're not sincere, things will happen that will uncover your, your reality. You have people here, for example, they lose their job, or they lose a family member, or something happens to them. Suddenly they find themselves in a state of hopelessness and, and, and complete despair, because how could this thing happen to me? I worked for this company for 30 years, and suddenly they just let me go just like this. Right? Or how could this happen to me? I was going to get married to this person next week or this happened and that happened and now this whole thing is off. And so small bumps in the, in the road, they completely lose their iman and they become hopeless and full of despair. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us the example of sincere people. In Gaza for example, lost their homes, lost their family members, lost their wealth, lost everything. And they're saying, Alhamdulillah, this is the qadr of Allah. What can we do? They're teaching us how to be resilient in the face of hardships, how to, be, how to be sincere. When all the trials and tribulations come, you hold on to your iman. This is the reality of this world, is a test. This is the reality of this world. And then you have you know, people that, that you know, the smallest temptation comes, or the smallest trials and tribulation come, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى حرف. There are people who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the edge. On the edge. Imagine a cliff. There's the edge. They're right there on the edge. 
If something good happens to them, oh, Allah is on our side, everything is great. As soon as they get a little bit of trouble, they fall off. Their iman is gone in an instant. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, he's, he's, he's telling us, I didn't ask you for anything except to be sincere. All the actions of ibadat and everything that you do. If you don't have sincerity behind them, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa called it shirk. Right? He said, you know, I don't fear for my ummah to worship the idols and all these other things. He said, but I do fear for them the hidden shirk. What is the hidden shirk, ya Rasulullah? He said, it is to worship Allah to be seen by others. Worshipping Allah to be seen by others. Riyah. Right? And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this disease is hidden in the hearts. It's like a black ant on a dark rock in the darkness of the night. You can't see it. It's hard to detect. But you have people, for example, there was a telling a story of a man. He's in the masjid. Allahu Akbar, he's praying. And then there are people sitting in the back. They're saying, this man, mashallah, he's always in the first row. Yeah, I've seen him all the time, you know. And mashallah, his qara is so beautiful. He's reading loud. Yeah, mashallah, he's great. He's all, and, and I see him giving sadaqah every single time. The guy's in ruku, and then they stop praising him. And he turns around, in ruku, he says, Brothers, I'm, if you didn't know, I'm also fasting. <laughs> right? So, so this is the reality of riyah. Is, is why do we, because this is something noble, something honorable, people love to see it, righteousness. So some people, they wear the mask of righteousness. And they dress up. And they put on a mask of righteousness. And they want everybody to think, MashaAllah, Mawlana, Shaykh, this, 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 this. They want to be elevated. They want to be honored. They want to be this. They want to be that. But where is the sincerity? Where is that iman in the heart? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, the one who sheds a single tear while remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them shade on the day of judgment. Have you shed a single tear while you're alone remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is the measure. Right? When you're alone by yourself, do you get into fusuq and fasad and all these things? Or do you mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is the measure. Right? And, and, and the, of the measurements of, of sincerity, our scholars have said, a person will do good in secret. They don't want others to know. You know, they will do good in secret. And the Prophet sallallahu he mentioned that of, in the end of times, it will be so difficult. A man will be a, a believer during the day and he will completely lose his iman in the night time. And a man will be a believer in the night and he will completely lose his iman in the daytime. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is the fitna of Dajjal. On that time, you know, a person can be robbed of his iman in an instant. And the Mufassirin, they said, the reality is the people whose iman gets switched off like this is they had no iman to begin with. They had no iman to begin with. If your iman can just go away just like that, means there was nothing to begin with. Whereas people who used to be mushrikeen, and then they became the best of mu'mineen, means even in their shirk, in their jahiliyyah, they had iman. And this is what's happening today. When you see trials and tribulations come, you have people that some of us would be so happy to label kuffar. Like these people are kuffar. And then they're opening up the Quran and they're like, Everything in here resonates with my heart. This is what was in my heart all along. And here it is being expressed in this book. And so they're saying, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. And then you have people who used to wear hijab. They used to have a beard. And they're saying, I'm afraid to, to go out with my hijab anymore. I'm afraid to, to, to show my Islam. So we changed their name from Muhammad to Mo. They change their name from, from uh, you know, and, and they take off their hijab. And they, they just all the, they, why? What is going on? There is an emptiness inside. And we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our iman. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us sincerity. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us firm upon his deen. Aquli qawli hadha astaghfirullah alaykum fastaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد ولا آله وصحبه أجمعين. And so our scholars they mention the wealth and prosperity is a test, and the trials and difficulties and constriction is a test. You have the example of Yusuf عليه السلام. Yusuf عليه السلام he was taken from his family, betrayed by his family, thrown into the well, sold into slavery. Found himself in the palace of some wealthy man. His wife has questionable morals. And she locks the doors. 
And she says, come to me. And our Mufassirin, they said, this is the example of the dunya and the believer. You are Yusuf, alayhi salam. You are the believer who's had the doors of the dunya locked on you, and you find yourself in this prison. And there is the seductive lure of this dunya calling you to itself. Come to me. You cannot escape. The doors are locked. So you're running around trying to save your vanity, trying to save your iman, trying to save your dignity. And you're running around trying to protect yourself because the dunya is chasing after you. Either that or you are chasing after the dunya. If you're chasing after the dunya, that's, you already lost the battle. But if you're trying to avoid the dunya, the dunya is chasing after you. The dunya is chasing after you. And you're running. And either your shirt is ripped from the front or the back. And, and many people, they find themselves in a situation where the door finally opens. And the rub of that house is there in front of them. They, they say, what's going on here? Right? And this is an amazing story if you look at it. Right? She's chasing after him. He finally gets to the door. He opens the door and there is her husband. La ilaha illallah. Look at the drama. Right? And then he's like, what's going on? And they're both breathing heavy. And she says, he was after me. What are, you going to, what are you going to punish somebody who intended to harm your family? Immediately she's throwing up uh, propaganda and blame and everything. It's all his fault, even though she's the aggressor. Right? And this is the reality of this dunya. Right? This is the reality of aggression. Is any time there is a, there is a transgression, there is a victim play. And this is what we see today with the propaganda and the news and all these things. We are the victims. We didn't do anything wrong. They're the ones aggressing against us. How are, we sh how are we going to punish them? What should be deserving of them? Should we wipe out and flatten all of Gaza? This is the reality. This is what's being said. And so there's multiple layers of meanings. If you were to just sit down and reflect about the nature of this world, about the nature of reality and sincerity. What saved Yusuf salam in the end? He was sincere. He was sincere. And he, he was willing to sacrifice everything. He said, Ya Allah, prison is better for me than what they're calling me to. Ya Allah, prison is better for me than what they're, what they're inviting me to. And he was willing to give up all the things in the world just so he can save his dignity in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved his dignity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevated him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought his oppressors in front of him. And they all realized their wrongdoings. And at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. He's by himself and he's, saying, he's reflecting on this incredible life that he's left and he says Fatir is samawati wal earth. oh the one who 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 you know originated the heavens and the earth Anta dunya wal you are my guardian you are my protector in dunya and akhra it's all from you all the good that i see is from you he says you know take me as a believer at the end all he wants is to leave this world in a state of iman la ilaha illallah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our iman. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to die in a state of iman. And to make our last words, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep away from us the temptations of this dunya. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us courage. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us wisdom. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and our loved ones. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, we ask you to forgive our shortcomings, Ya Allah. Forgive our sins, Ya Allah. Forgive our mistakes, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbil Alameen, we, don't, we stand before you, Ya Allah. Not with our deeds, Ya Allah. We depend on your mercy, Ya Allah. And we have nothing, Ya Allah. And we are completely completely weak, Ya Allah, and we are completely dependent on your strength, Ya Allah, on your might, Ya Allah, on your mercy, Ya Allah, on your generosity, Ya Allah. Grant us what is deserving of your generosity, Ya Allah, and don't grant us what is deserving of our deeds, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbil Alameen, we ask you, on the day of judgment, you resurrect all of us, Ya Allah, in the company of the righteous, Ya Allah, in the company of the believers, Ya Allah, amongst the shuhada, amongst the siddiqeen, the anbiya, and the rusul, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbil Alameen, we ask you to protect us and all our loved ones from the jahannam, Ya Allah, from the torment of the fire, Ya Allah, from the torment of the grave, Ya Allah. And we ask, Ya Rabbil Alameen, on the day of judgment, Ya Allah, grant us honor and dignity, Ya Allah, and cover us, Ya Allah, and protect us, Ya Rabbil Alameen, from anything that's going to disgrace us in dunya and akhra, Ya Allah. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa la alihi wa sahabihi ajma'een wa akhra dawana an alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Aqimu salah.